Activist Fannie Lou Hamer once said, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I think that applies to Portsmouth, Virginia Councilwoman Lisa Lucasburg, who last week was fed up with uh, shenanigans taking place in that particular city. Uh, a clip of her cussing them out went viral. Here is, though, the full context of her statements. Yes. Councilwoman Lucas Burke, ma'am, you have the floor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I did hear the information last Thursday, and I was quite alarmed at a time in our nation where women are mis misrepresented, underrepresented, not represented, mistreated. This is egregious for this male dominant council to make this decision today. At a time when my Delta sisters, and this is our Delta sister, is here for our Delta day to be make this kind of mockery of women is egregious. At a time in our nation when Kentonji Brown was confirmed by the Congress to be the highest ranking member in the su Supreme Court, and this council chooses to degrade women, I'm pissed as a, and I ain't gonna say it because you know I can say it, but I'm gonna be cool with it, but I'm pissed. I spoke with Wilder, and I spoke with Battle, and I asked them, had you heard this information? And they did not. They said they did not. But Mr. Battle told me I won't go go for it. She's been a great city manager. I'm not going to put her down. But you sat here and you lied in my face. You lied in my face, Mr. Battle. And I want you to lie to these people to say that you didn't say that. You said that this woman has done her job and she has been nothing but great to this community, which we know. We know she has done her job. We know she has bent over backward. We know she has looked aside to some of the votes that you have tried to have people pay you all to for votes that she looked aside, that she could have reported. <laughs> she got a lot on this council, and that's why they want to get rid of her. And I hope that y'all see what's happening, and I hope you make your decision when, when November comes. Council, I'm pissed as a motherfucker. Yeah, I'm a fan. I'm mad as a motherfucker. Hold on, Council I am. Council because woman. I know what's been going on. I know somebody came to my office and asked me to deal with this stuff because they've been asked to be paid $3,000 to I'm, I'm going to recess this meeting right stuff. now. I'm, I'm sick of it. We're going to recess the meeting right now. I'm sick of it. We're going to recess it. Well, that, that video has been aired uh, hundreds of thousands of times all across the country. Uh, Councilwoman Lisa Lucas Burke joins us right now on Roland Martin Unfiltered. Glad to have you. Uh, you tried not to go there, uh, but as you continued, uh, clearly you were, you were not happy. Now, the city council voted to fire city manager Angel Jones in a four to three vote. She was just hired last year. Uh, we've talked about uh, other issues that Portsmouth, Virginia has had uh, dealing with your police chief and, and all kind of other different stuff. So what the hell is happening in, in Portsmouth? Well, what's happening in Portsmouth is we have a male majority council who rules on votes for three votes. Um, and they just felt like they weren't getting what they needed out of the city manager. Uh, we recently had uh, held her uh, evaluation period after uh, 10 months, we held her evaluation period and we gave her scores, one being poor and five being excellent. And um, her scores came back average. Um, of course, uh, a lot of the four members gave her very poor scores, said that she hadn't done her job, she hadn't uh, voiced with the community, said that she was hadn't done what she needed to do with crime and just, you know, that her, her people skills. And, and they just gave her these poor scores so that they can use it as an opportunity to get rid of her at the particular time that they wanted to get rid of her. And they took one year to do this. Who can turn a city like Portsmouth around in one year? Of course, you need she needed more time to just to be able to learn who the players were and who the council is and how um, they deliberate on things. But they use this and they said that she had uh, received a poor evaluation and they used that to get rid of her. And one person said she hadn't been tough enough on crime. Well, tough on crime. Crime is an issue nationwide. It's not just in Portsmouth. You know, we have all of these guns. We have these shootings. Uh, we have people uh, committing all kinds of offenses uh, with handguns and, and, and killings. And, you know, um, that wasn't her fault. And I don't feel like they gave her 
um, an opportunity to prove herself as a city manager. She came in on a 4-3 vote, um, and of course, three uh, were against her. And I believe that this whole year they worked um, to try to get her out. You, um, see, so the, you said that uh, that happened on Delta Days. One, is she a Delta? Yes. yes. So, Delta, so, so you, she's so, a Delta. So you believe Delta that today. by having all the, by having doing this on Delta Day, it was it was to extra embarrass her. Absolutely intentional, and it really scarred her because she had her sisters there who were there to lift her up. Uh, to sing her praises. And, and we didn't think that it was going that way because I had spoken to two of the council members and when the rumors uh, were heard uh, a couple months ago and they said, you can't believe everything you hear in the street. So I said, okay, but when five people tell me something is no longer a rumor, that becomes a, a factual situation. And so we go into this meeting um, beforehand and, and I'm asking, I'm hearing these rumors again, what's going on? And one particular council member, Mr. Battle, Councilman Battle told me, He's not going to go with them fools. He's not going to let them degrade this woman like that. He's not going to let him down her. And in fact, he said that he talked to her and offered her a proposal for an increase to be able to stay on and to renew her contract. And so when he got on that council and he's flipped and he changed his mind, I felt like that was a slap in my face. That was a slap in the face of the city manager. So, so wait, 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 wait. He said, he said that he was not going to vote to fight to get rid of her absolutely and this absolutely. and and this is this is who he is this, this so, so y'all if y'all uh, actually actually uh, i'm going to uh let me do this here i have it up on my ipad i, I want to show okay. it to the folk um, cuz he, he's also a brother he's a brother he's a brother and and stayed in her office stayed asking questions stayed asking her for information and she did not deny him anything at one point in time because she tried to work with all seven of the council members even though four disagreed with her bringing with them bringing her on because they wanted someone else that they thought that they could keep um as as their puppet um and then when we didn't agree with that person and bought her own of course she tried to work with everyone and for them to dismiss her like that was just egregious and what infuriated me was that they just lied in my face because I want to prove to them that they didn't have four votes to take her out. So you, so you said that, uh, and this is where it's, it, it, so you said that uh, he literally, that first of all, he literally told you he was not going to fire her. This, this is him right here. Absolutely. This is Paul J. Battle right here. Right. Uh, and uh, this is, y'all can see, uh, that's his contact information. That's on the city website. So I'm, that's I'm right. so that So he told you, I am not going to vote fire her. How long was that before he went to the room and actually voted to fire? That, that, that was on a Thursday. So Thursday, we had the weekend to think about it. And then on that Tuesday, he went in and said that, you know, she hadn't done her job and he's going to vote uh, to get rid of her. I, I read a story that said that, that, that she was approached and said, you should resign or we're going to fire you. Absolutely. And that was uh, Dr. Whitaker. That was one of the members who is the head of the personnel committee. He called her to his church. How do you handle this in your church? How do you be a man of God to bring in somebody that could be like your mother or your sister or your auntie and tell them inside your church that you either resign or I have four votes to take you out? And she thought that they was coming to talk about her renewed contract. Hold on. Wait a minute. Hold on. Doc, you said Mark Whitaker? Yeah, Dr. Mark Whitaker. He the one we just redeemed, you know, um, last in, in 2020 for him to come back on the city council. Now, wait, now y'all, come on, y'all, come on. So, thank you. So that, so wait a minute. <laughs> um, so, because explain what happened to him last year, because I remember we were, we covered the story. Uh, right. and, and so, this, so this brother, so you had, brother. So you had two brother brothers moved against issues. Yes, this brother had some issues in his community where his church was trying to start up a credit union and um, the credit union went disfunct or something to that nature. And, and there was a forgery situation that went on uh, with uh, some of the people who um, were supposed to be members of that credit union. Well, one of the members came forth and said that I never signed my name to that document. So it went through a long, lengthy uh, trial. Um, and of course, he's your alpha brother, and he had one of his other alpha brothers to to defend him, and that you know they they worked mm. well with that. Um, so who else voted against? Who so, else voted against? Paul, so Paul Battle voted against. Dr. Battle, Battle Whitaker. Whitaker, Chris Woodard, 
and DeAndre Barnes, who is the vice mayor of the city council. All right, so let, let, let's hold up. So this Bring brother, this up. brother right here. So DeAndre Barnes, he voted against. Yes. Okay, and uh, and, and and who else? And Chris, and then Chris Woodard. Chris Woodard was an appointee uh, to the city council in 2021, and he came on. Um, and of course, he has been their their yes man. So, uh, for any votes that they needed to get through to make it a four so, vote. So these four black men voted against this sister. Yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, voted for her. Right. Now, now uh, somebody sent me a text. who's very familiar with Virginia, Virginia politics. They said Portsmouth fires city managers every 20 minutes. That's what it seems like. That's what it seems like. You know, because, you know, they had a former council that fired our, our former city council uh, uh, city manager. And, and then they brought on, you know, um, had an interim um, in for, um, you know, a while um, as a city manager. And then we went through a hiring process and, and then brought in um, the new city manager in January of 2021. And she's been here for one year and not quite even one year. I mean, in one year and shy of a couple of days. And, and then they want to go in and say that um, they want to go on another direction. Um, and they want to bring on somebody new. And that meeting tonight was was where they want to bring on someone new. So you, the mayor, and another and uh, and Bill Moody, and Bill Moody, the long white councilman, white council member, voted right. to keep her. Voted to keep her now because they've been doing the job. Now, how long was her contract? And y'all got to pay it off now. What's the deal? Well, yeah, now they got to pay her out because um, they fired her without cause. And oh, oh, oh. How, so how many years was the contract? Well, they only gave her a one year contract. Wow. And this was we wanted to go in. I wanted to bring in a proposal for us to give her a four year contract to increase her salary and to, to offer her at least an eight month severance if they decide to give her. Okay, look, I've covered I cover four cover city council. Who the hell has a city manager on a one year contract? That's what I'm saying. You, you know, and, and they just at will. They figured that she is at the will. She works for, at the pleasure of council. And, and I guess their pleasure uh, was that they, they were done with her and it was time for her to go. You um, you 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 issue what well, some are calling an apology. Uh, but are you are you sorry for what you said? Because, look, uh, based upon comments that I've seen, folks like, yo, that's the kind of fire we need when somebody that's speaking, speaking truth and honestly. Exactly. I, I, and, and the people who I apologized to uh, was the people who were, were, were offended by uh, the MF word that I used. But I was not apologizing for the well, content that I gave. And, well, and, well, and, I, I don't think Sam Jackson or Jennifer Lewis probably have a problem with it. Yes, absolutely. I think I learned it from some of my colleagues and such as them. <laughs> uh, and yes. uh, now, now, did you hear from your mama? Uh, you know, is, yes. Uh, my, you know what my mom said. I don't know how how raw I can go on your 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 channel. The but show called Unfiltered. Go ahead. It's unfiltered. My mom said, "Who the fuck you think taught her this? How to how to cuss?" <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. You know, you had to survive in this community around here. You know, and you either get eat or get ate alive or survive. And I learned how to survive early. And you know, and I'm the only female on this male dominant council, so. You know, but I'm used to serving with with all guys because when I was economic development uh, chair, I served with all men and, and I have an undergraduate degree from Norfolk State University in electronics engineering. So I'm used to being around all guys. So I'm not offended about anything that comes out of anybody's mouth. I just learned how to get in there and work and to get my part done. And so that's what I've been used to doing. So I'm right at home uh, with this council. Um, so here we are. Um, and, and again, for folks who don't know, your, your mother is uh, the leader of... Uh, the Senate. Uh, She's uh, the uh, president pro tempore of the Virginia State Senate. She is the person who sits in place uh, when the lieutenant governor steps out or, or as a way for meeting or out sick, she steps in as the lieutenant governor, as the president pro tempore of the Senate. Senator L. Louise Lucas is my Well, uh, look, my, look, my position is, you know, uh, sometimes somebody got to say it. Uh, and uh, and you got to say what people understand it. So uh, I think folk now get it. And trust me, uh, it's a whole bunch of folks uh, who have been commenting uh, about uh, your uh, statement uh, all over the country. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I was, you know, I was passionate about it because I and I said, you know, maybe they weren't hearing me, you know, but now they can you hear me now? It was one of them kind of moments. <laughs> and I think they hear me now. If they hear me now. All right, then. Well, look, uh, we appreciate you joining us. Uh, hopefully uh, things will get straight. Now, did they actually hire a city manager tonight? 
No, we didn't. I actually uh, appealed to them to tell them that our council right now is not stable and that we need to wait until November when we get uh, a whole new brand new council elected uh, to office. And in January, we can go in and look at that process again. And that was not a vote against the person that they put up because the person that they put up uh, was Tanya Chapman, Chief Ch Tanya Chapman, which is our former chief of police who was ousted uh, uh, in 2016. You know, so that was a very trying time for our city as well. But I would not allow them to politically prostitute me nor Tanya Chapman by bringing them in, bringing her in as the city manager, because I know that they have an agenda that is ill willed. And I didn't want her to get caught up into this toxic situation that it is right now. All right. Portsmouth, Virginia Councilwoman Lisa Lucas Burke, we surely appreciate it. Uh, thanks a bunch. Thank you so much for having me. You all take care. All right. Let me go to my panel here. Uh, Hey, DeMario, she just made it plain, huh? <laughs> well, that's my good Delta sister, sister. So, yeah, she did make it plain. I'm going to tell you the truth, man. The one thing that, that really caught my ear, though, is she said that the city manager had evidence that the city councilors were being bribed for votes. And from a legal standpoint, she uh, breached her fiduciary duty to the city by not bringing that forward. And if that's true, that's not a reason to keep her. That's the reason to say she's she she, she breached her fiduciary duty. So no, to as passionate as my saw what I was saying right there, she kind of put put the sister in some legal jeopardy. No, nah, she don't. Nah, she put some council members in legal jeopardy. Well, both. Well, she put them both in. But I mean, if I'm making an argument to keep somebody. I wouldn't say that they breached their fiduciary duty and and, and hid others' uh, illegality as the reason well, why. Well, they she did. Well, she didn't. She didn't say. I, just, I mean, that's what she said, Roland. No, 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 like, no, no. She didn't say it was a bribe. No, I got your point. That's, that's what a bribe. Hey, she said she. They, people have been paying you for votes, and I have evidence of that. And she could have. She had a lot on the council that she could have said. Well, she didn't again, say. to me, that's what that's what you call in of uh, the Virginia Attorney General, uh, Teresa. Uh, <laughs> it's, it, it was interesting seeing all of the people commenting uh, the last few days as this uh, clip uh, went viral. It should have went viral. You know, um, Councilwoman uh, Burke, you know, has said uh, what I think many other the, uh, of individuals who are currently in leadership has wanted to say to their other fellow members, you know, and, and honestly, sometimes the, the, the reaction is behind closed doors. But this one was in a public, you know, council meeting in a setting where enough was enough. And so, you know, I think there was a, of course, it could have been, you know, the cordial way and the traditional way. But sometimes, you know, when you keep beating the drum and you have to say it over and over, it gets very draining. And I think, you know, as this woman was, you know, stating like, look, the majority is not in our favor. I'm dealing with a, a male dominant panel who is, you know, um, obviously lying to my face and then sitting next to me voting uh on a on a counter position. Mm -hmm. And so uh, again, I'm I'm glad she took a stand. Um but again, I think the the passion is what probably got her elected and into office. So, you know, I don't think you should ever lose that passion when you're in public office. I just think, you know, if you're right, you're right and if you need to stand for something, then make sure you stand with facts. Uh Mustafa you know, I appreciate Councilwoman Lucas Burke. She reminds me of all the Deltas in my family because they do not play. Uh, they know their <laughs> facts and they will come and get you. Um, you know, it's interesting. You couldn't possibly think that giving somebody a year is enough time for them to get all the pieces in place, to get the budgets implemented and begin to see the steps play out. You know, you got to give folks at least 24 to 36 months before you can actually do a real evaluation. You know, I've operated all kinds of levels in the government, and it's just it's nonsensical to think that 12 months is going to be enough time. So somebody set her up uh, by putting that type of a time frame in place. Uh, and that's why it's also important to make sure that you have a good attorney when you are actually going through these contracts mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that you, uh, you know, you have everything that you need in place for you to be able to be successful um, and to also make sure you have that parachute if somebody wants to act up and oust you earlier. And, and I'll just remind folks, I hope all the folks who are getting ready to vote in November down there remember this moment, and I'm sure there's a number of other moments. But Public Enemy shared with us that every brother ain't a brother cause of color. 
So we should remember that everybody looks like us don't mean that they necessarily have our best interest at heart. Uh, so Cherry Love in the chat said, replay that, Roland. I want to hear that shit again. She got me hyped <laughs> up. So come on, play it. <laughs> Councilwoman Lucas Burke, ma'am, you have the floor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I did hear the information last Thursday, and I was quite alarmed at a time in our nation where women are mis misrepresented, underrepresented, not represented, mistreated. This is egregious for this male dominant council to make this decision today. At a time when my Delta sisters, and this is our Delta sister, is here for our Delta Day to be make this kind of mockery of women is egregious. At a time in our nation when Kentonji Brown was confirmed by the Congress to be the highest ranking member in the su Supreme Court, and this council chooses to degrade women, I'm pissed as a, and I ain't gonna say it because you know I can say it, but I'm gonna be cool with it, but I'm pissed. I spoke with Woodard and I spoke with Battle, and I asked them, had you heard this information? And they did not. They said they did not. But Mr. Battle told me I won't gonna go for it. She's been a great city manager. I'm not gonna put her down. But you sat here and you lied in my face. You lied in my face, Mr. Battle, and I want you to lie to these people to say that you didn't say that. You said that this woman has done her job and she has been nothing but great to this community, which we know. We know she has done her job. We know she has bent over backward. We know she has looked aside to some of the votes that you have tried to have people pay you all to for votes that she looked aside, that she could have reported. <laughs> she got a lot on this council, and that's why they want to get rid of her. And I hope that y'all seeing what's happening, and I hope you make your decision when, when November comes. Council. I'm Woman. pissed as a motherfucker. Yeah, I'm a say I'm mad as a motherfucker. Hold on, Council I Woman. am. Council because Woman. I know what's been going on. I know somebody came to my office and asked me to deal with this stuff because they've been asked to be paid $3,000 to I'm, I'm going to recess this meeting right stuff. now. I'm, I'm sick of it. We're going to recess the meeting right now. I'm sick of it. We're going to recess it. All I'm saying is, I, I don't know if y'all saw uh, the mayor there. Y'all didn't see him. Y'all saw his hand. He was like, uh, uh, he, he was like the usher in church. Uh, Sister Lucas Burke. Sister Lucas Burke. Uh, can you calm down? Yeah, he, him stroking her arm. She pulled it back. I'm mad as a Hey, she was not trying to feel that. She, she, she laid it out. But hey, look, but look, bottom line is, sometimes you got to say that thing exactly like it is. Hey, I stand, I stand on my point, though. A lot of people may be on the investigation moving forward because a lot of what she said. She said people was buying votes, and, and she knew about it, so I don't know. She said, well, hey, and then, look, look, and guess what? If I'm the city, if, I, if I'm the now five city manager, call a Virginia attorney general. And say, Absolutely. let's have a conversation. All Absolutely. right, y'all. Hey, maybe, maybe she said she could. Now, to be honest, she could say that's retaliation. Oh, oh, she could I, say they hey. Fired her. They fired her because she knew about what was going on and she was going to move forward with hey, it. That's hey, what she should be hey, get that check. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. All right, y'all. Come on down, come on down, come on down, come on down. We welcome you to the launch of the Mass Poor People's Low Wage Assembly and Mara March on Washington, D.C., June 18, 2022. We have a new unsettling voice, and we are powerful new unsettling force, and we are here. We're rising up to demonstrate the compelling power that we, poor and low-income people, have to reconstruct society from the bottom up. And we need to do it with the loudest voices possible, the biggest actions possible. Because we know that there is no scarcity in this land. The only scarcity is the moral will to do what's right. Hold on. We are those with sub-minimum wage jobs who can't afford sky-high rent. People with disabilities are the fastest growing minority group. 
It's crazy to me that in 2021, it's still legal for workplaces to pay a sub-minimum wage to people with disabilities. There are still so much trial and tribulations that we go through as Indigenous people. We can't get a decent wage to sustain ourselves, nor can we get adequate housing. Veterans across this nation say enough is enough. We can't pat essential workers on the back on one day and then cut their health care the next day. Health is a political choice. What more do I need to do to prove that my voice is just as valuable as anyone else's? There are still forces in denial that would try to slow walk our transition to a clean economy and a just future for us all. We have an immoral system run by immoral people. But together we walk and we walk and we fight. It's time for a change. Reconstruyamos esta gran nación. See, we are people of resilience as we fight these interlocking injustices together. When we work together, mobilize together and rise together, we become a voice for the voiceless and we become an agent of change in a time where great change is needed. We need the third reconstruction to ensure that deaf people, people with disabilities, and all people can have the right to live and to thrive. We know what they are doing, but the question is, what are we going to do? Reconstruction begins when we change our mentality and say it's time for you to get your foot off of my neck. Oh!